Okay, this is Ron with Mobile Fix Automotive again. <clears throat> Back here working on a GM. This is a 2002 Chevy Suburban uh, K1500, so it's four-wheel drive. And what I'm dealing with here is uh, the dreaded P0327 code, and only the 327 code. Um, this customer is not only a customer, but a very, very good friend of mine, and they've been saving their money to do this repair for quite a while because it's about a, through a shop, it's about a $500 repair um, to change out both knock sensors and replace the wiring harness. Um, as a professional mechanic, I always recommend when you do the knock sensors on these GM motors, the, uh, the 4.8, the 5.3, or the 6 liter, just buy both knock sensors and the wiring harness. Buy them from GM. And this video is really shot to kind of show you why you want to buy them from GM. When this vehicle first came to me last week with the P0327 code on, um, the first thing I did was pull the intake plenum, which is this piece right here. Okay, this is your intake manifold and the plenum in one unit. And uh, after, after I pulled it off and I looked down in these holes, I'll show you that real quick. Okay. <clears throat> this is where your knock sensors are located. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. There's your alternator with the intake manifold removed. Your knock sensors are located in the intake valley on the top of the engine in a hole. They're underneath a rubber, basically seal spacer with a, the single wire going in. There's one on the rear of the engine and there's one on the front of the engine. And the problem I had with this was originally, to try to save the customer money, I bought BWD sensors from O'Reilly. And I don't normally use a whole lot of aftermarket parts anymore because I have a better luck with OEM. But I purchased the wiring harness pigtail assembly from O'Reilly, brand new, and the knock sensors, both of them brand new. And I installed them. I torqued them to 15 foot pounds, like the book said, and took it for a test drive to set the readiness codes. And immediately, well, not immediately, but about five minutes into my test drive on the freeway to do the readiness monitors, the P0327 came back. Um, so I cleared the code and not realizing whether I had cleared it before or not, sometimes you try to argue with yourself and say, I might have just forgot to clear it. Uh, but nope, I cleared it, it came back. Um, and then I cleared it again and it was fine. And I drove it around for a couple hours and it was good. So I was figuring, all right, no problem. So I delivered it to the customer, and two days later, check engine light came back on, P0327. Um, so yesterday I spent probably four hours running ohm tests on this wiring harness that I got from O'Reilly, along with the sensors. And the ohm test at this connector, I'm gonna show you this, you don't have to look at my face the whole time. Okay, this is the wiring harness that comes up, and it basically plugs onto the top of the intake manifold. And then the wiring harness from the engine plugs into it. Now I verify, verified that I had a uh, voltage reference signal from the ECM on both of these, both of these terminals. Um, there's only two wires to this plug. One wire goes to one knock sensor, one wire goes to the other. It's basically a grounding system. It's, a, it's set up a lot like uh, a temperature sending unit with a single wire where there's a, a, a low reference voltage that's sent into it and then however much the sensor itself grounds the wire in resistance is, is what the computer sees. Um, with the O'Reilly sensors, these things were ohming out at 104 ohms. So I'm gonna test these real quick just to make sure that they're within the spec that's allowed. The spec said 99 to 107. But uh, my, my factory ones on my service truck, on my six liter, were, were 99 to 100. Um, and these were up at 102, 104. So they were already on the, a little bit on the high side. Okay, so I'm back. I've got my, uh, my blue point, which is my snap on. It's kind of the knockoff of the fluke meter. I've had this meter for about 15 years and 
I tell you, they keep trying to sell me a new one, but this meter does everything I need it to do uh, for the most part. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the ground right here on the water pump bolt, nice clean bolt. And I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put this on the negative, which is on the cylinder head here real quick, just to check, test to make sure I got good continuity through the water pump bolt. And I'm at 0 0.3 ohms, 0, 0.0 is perfect. So I got a little bit of fluctuation right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect it to one of these two terminals in here. And that's my reading, 100.0. So I'm four ohms less on the OEM than I am on the aftermarket. One hundred point one, one hundred point zero, fluctuating on this. So it's actually lower ohms on the OEM stock units than it is on the BWDs. And even though it's within specification, I have a feeling um, that it's not the ohms resistance so much, but the sensitivity of the sensor that is causing the problem. So I'm gonna put this, button this back up, put the intake manifold back on it. I'm gonna clear the codes. I'm gonna take it for another test drive. And uh, we will return back and see whether or not switching from the aftermarket BWDs to the factory AC Delco actually cured this problem. And uh, hopefully this will help you guys out. Stand by.